Alrighty guys, it's been a long time since my last video, I've just been busy and haven't had time to get out with the camera and it looks like it's going to rain, well it has looked like that all day and right now it is 73 degrees outside, unseasonably cool, but it's kind of humid, it's 84% humidity right now. And it's going to be hot again the next couple of days. It's going to be back in the 90s. Today's August 24th, 2019. And here's a little fun fact. 13 years ago, on this exact date, I moved into this house. August 24th, 2006 is when I moved here. The Goodman wasn't here when I moved. And obviously, but anyways, back to the video. As you can see by the dripping condensate line, it is quite humid in the house because when it's a humidity storm like this, as I call it, it gets quite well, let's just say the air is full of moisture and it finds its way into the house. So, I'm going to go inside and turn this thing on. It is nice and dry inside. It's a little bit warmer inside than outside, but even though it's 73 out here, I really can't open the windows when there's nothing but humidity in the air. But I'm going to go in there, turn it down a couple degrees, and we'll have a mid-season cooling startup video. Still dripping. Nope, not when it's running. That's because there's so much static pressure that the condensate holds back when it, until it shuts off. And uh, usually you would see condensation dripping all the time, but not on this unit because it's so oversized and the ductwork is so small and the static pressure is very high. And all that static pressure coming through the coil like this, and that water is basically just, it can't drain until the blower shuts up. Which is really nothing I can do to correct that. Now, if it's running a long time and it's really hot out, it will drain, but slowly.
vent right here. And it is really cold. Let's go turn it off. Now it's already reached set point. Just go up one degree. All right, you hear the blower still going. As soon as that blower shuts off, condensation should start running out. And for those who are wondering why I keep the temperature set so high is because I have this thing set to six cycles per hour, which is the max the thermostat can go up, so it cycles a lot. The higher the cycles per hour, the more it's gonna cycle. And that's a, cycles per hour, compressor cycles per hour, whatever you want to call it, it's the CPA from the thermostat. Here goes the condensation, because the blower shut off and the static pressure is no longer holding the condensation back, and it's going to drip, drip, drip until it drains all out. And as you see, it does drain. But the reason I have the temperature set so high, like on 78, 80 degrees, is because it actually overcools two to three degrees from what I have it set to. So if it's set to 78, it's cooling down to 76, 75 degrees. Even though the thermostat doesn't display it, it does. So if it's set to 80, it's cooling to 78, 77 degrees. And the reason I have it set up like that is because this unit here, and there went my neighbor's Goodman package unit turning on, but my unit here is oversized for the house and it's a single stage unit, meaning if I left it at three cycles per hour, it wouldn't cool, it wouldn't keep up, it would run and stop for a long period of time. And that's because it's oversized. I increased the cycles per hour from three to six and now it cycles more often and it overcools mainly for humidity control. And in the winter time, when it's in heat, it it can regulate the heat better and it's complicated but that's why I keep it set so high because if I set the thermostat to 76 any lower than 76 this thing will freeze up into a solid block of ice it's done it before there's nothing wrong with the unit the reason it does that is because it's got like ductwork size for a three ton unit and it's a four ton unit so this house needs a three ton single stage I would do three and a half single, but when this one goes, if it ever does, there will more than likely be a four ton two stage unit right in its place because a four ton two stage unit would operate on the single stage like a two and a half, three tons most of the time, which is perfect. But anyways, I figured I'd just do this video. As you see, the sky looks gray and dark and boring and <laughs> looks like it's gonna rain and the frigidaire has been off mostly all day so old slosher here as i call it the tired frigidaire yep water sitting in the base pan <laughs> it was on earlier today when it was a little warm out it was more humid than warm it got up to like 82 but the humidity made it feel unbearably hot out here and uh, i don't like the heat so I had this on low cool all day and it was just sloshing water galore in there. It was pulling out so much humidity from this leaky, drafty building that it really surprised me. It got it so cold in there that the windows started to fog up. But the fridge air didn't freeze up. It has before in weather like this, but it's only if I max out the thermostat and leave it on low, but I usually switch it over to high. But uh, speaking of thermostats, Mr. 
Frigidaire here has a bad thermostat. Sometimes it will cycle, sometimes it will not, or cycle is in the compressor turning on. I either have to, you know, twist the thermostat back and forth until it clicks, but I'm going to resolve that problem. No, I'm not going to replace the unit. I'm more than likely going to make a regular house thermostat workout here. So there's one other unit that we haven't seen in a while, and I can't show the inside of it because it's in a junk room, but let's uh, go to the other side of the house, so to say, and see the Arctic King. I don't want to forget my tripod. I don't think it'll go anywhere. But it is really wet out here. It has rained every single day this week. I figured why not on the 13th year anniversary of me moving here. Why not make a video on all the air conditioners. I got fun stuff here. This little thing has got some coal rot going on. Arctic King. It's nothing more than a rebadged Medea unit. He's got a Kingen compressor, or however you say that name. Quingen, Kingen, and a Welling fan motor. It's got a discharge muffler on it. That's not an accumulator. It's a discharge muffler. It's got a Welling fan motor, and it's a spider web that I just stuck my hand into. That's a little Arctic King. It cools a junk room. Can't show the front of it because, like I said, it's a junk room. That's why it's on a timer, remote control. But yeah, that's a little Arctic King. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm going to go edit it. It is 7:39 p.m. now, August 24th. Still dripping condensation. It'll probably drip all night. But if I were to pull that door off, water'd pour out. Have a look see at the compressor. Good old Copeland scroll. And a really sweaty suction accumulator. The compressor even sweats halfway up. It's got too much refrigerant in it. Compressors should never sweat themselves. They should only sweat up to the compressor, which means that suction line there should be sweating clear back to the compressor, but the compressor itself should not sweat. If the compressor is sweating, it is overcharged and it's liquid flooding back which is not good because you don't want to slug a compressor, but a scroll compressor can handle it a lot better than a recip compressor. Anyways, see y'all in the next video. As always, more to come. Bye for now.